Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from round 11 of this year's Global Chess League. Uh, it is the uh, SG Alpine Warriors versus the Shingari Golf Titans. Um, uh, the, the Alpine Warriors led by Magnus Carlsen and the Golf Titans led by Jan Shishtov Duda. Uh, they already played once uh, in the first half of the tournament. Their game ended in a draw in round 4 and now Magnus will try his luck with the white pieces. It's a fine game. Uh, Duda sacrifices the exchange for uh, you know a, a weirdly active position or maybe it's an actively weird position you guys will be the judge of that as usual uh, but all in all a very nice active game so let's check it out Magnus has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4 uh, Duda goes for the Sicilian defense with pawn to c5 knight to f3 d6 and of course knight to c3 not going for d4 right away we have knight to f6 bishop to e2 and bishop to e2 sort of an uh, offbeat move um you could uh, well it's maybe like the seventh most popular continuation but we transpose into the main line very quickly so it doesn't really matter knight to c6 we have pawn to d4 captures captures and now pawn to e5 uh, shifting it to the uh, boleslavsky variation of the classical sicilian with knight back to f3 knight to b3 a bit more popular but here we have knight to f3 pawn to h6 and now castles with bishop to e7 by duda and rook to e1 we have castles and now bishop to f1 it's a very uh very uh, standard move that uh, frees up the e file for the rook now the e4 pawn is nicely defended but uh, you will see just how useful this bishop on f1 is and it seems like a very passive square for the bishop but um, it, you know it definitely gets the job done so rook to e8 and now pawn to h3 and there is one game where a6 was played here maybe 20 33 years ago i think uh, uh, but here we have bishop to f8 and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game that's uh, so, okay, Magnus plays uh, pawn to b3, he wants to fiend to his dark square bishop, uh, we have a6 and uh, a bishop to b2, Duda continues to, uh, his expansion, we have bishop to, uh, pawn to b5, queen to d2, now preparing to bring the rooks into the game, and bishop to b7, fiend in the light square bishop, and now knight to d5, another standard uh, anti-Sicilian move, we have knight captures um, uh, on d5, e captures on d5, and knight to e7, now putting pressure on the d5 pawn, and Magnus defends it with pawn to c4, and now the c4 pawn is nicely defended by the b3 pawn, and by that bishop on f1 uh, that we've tucked in uh, for a later use, we have queen to d7, uh, developing the queen, connecting rooks, and now pawn to a4 putting pressure on that b5 pawn uh, of course hoping that duda captures on a4 then your c4 pawn is um, looking very strong now duda could maybe throw in a nice rook um, uh, rook to c8 but he goes for b captures on c4 first b captures on c4 and now knight to g6 now you can play e4 you can play f5 e4 you can play f5 uh, f4 all, all depends on what white plays pawn to a5 magnus grabs more space on the queen side uh, and now we have rook a to c8 as the rook uh, really has no more use on the a, uh, a, a file uh, bishop to a3 not just controlling this diagonal but also uh, preparing to shift the rook over to the b file because the b file is at the moment the only open file on the board uh, we have pawn to e4 uh, grabbing more space in the center, uh, but also allowing Magnus some squares. Now the d4 square, square has been vacated, and of course Magnus will happily use it as an outpost for his knight. We have knight to e5, Duda also created an outpost for his knight, and rook a to c1. And now we have queen to a4, putting pressure on the bishop. And this is, uh, of course, uh, when you look for moves, um, the knight really doesn't have a better move. Uh, it, it looks beautiful there. The bishop for the moment has no squares. The rook is fine on c8, this rook is fine on e8, the bishop has no moves on f8 so the only piece you have uh, left to improve is the queen and that's how you uh you know when you have a lot of moves um uh, th that you are considering always try to you know uh improve your worst piece the most and that move is accomplished by playing queen to a4 so here uh of course the bishop is hanging magnus defends it with bishop to b4 and now knight to d3 this is uh, possible as you will not be losing a pawn since the queen cannot uh, be attacking the pawn and also defending the bishop so while you don't want the knight here as it's attacking both of the rooks, Magnus does capture the knight, e captures on d3 and now rook e to d1. Now Magnus has to figure out how to safely capture the d-pawn uh, and then he's just going to be up a uh, up, uh, pawn. Uh, we have rook to c7, now you can double up on the e-file but also put more pressure on that c4 pawn. Uh, knight to f5 by Magnus, uh, very very unpleasant uh, and now bishop to c8, uh, putting pressure on the knight and now just knight back to e3. Uh, the point is that the c4 pawn is now nicely defended, 
uh, twice, uh, but also you can just move the rook here. Now you're going to play rook a1, attack the queen. Once the queen moves, you safely pick up the d3 pawn, and you have a better position. And uh, here, Duda uh, could continue with something like f5. Objectively, this is the safest way to go. Uh, point is that uh, after the, the, the said uh, variation is played, rook to a1, queen to d7, now you pick up the pawn here. You can play pawn to f4, you've won some space here on the king side, you kick away the knight from e3, now it goes to f1, and maybe you have uh, maybe you have something here. However, Duda decides to go for the exchange um, uh, sacrifice that we mentioned in the beginning of the video, and plays rook captures on e3. And now, how does Magnus continue? Well, if he just takes the rook, which um, uh, you don't want to capture with the queen, of course, then the bishop hangs, but you can play f captures on e3. This somewhat weakens your king, but also after bishop to f5, uh, you don't have e4, and the, the d3 uh, pawn is defended. So this would be very good for uh, Duda. Uh, Magnus instead uh, does not capture the rook right away. He plays rook to a1, and he allows Duda to play queen captures on a1. And it's, uh, again, objectively, maybe the best uh, thing to do. You've already grabbed material. Magnus did not capture back. Uh, why not take the rook? If queen captures on a1, rook captures, and now, okay, your rook is hanging, you move the rook, let's say queen captures on d3, the rook will capture the pawn on c4, and after bishop to c3, you will play something like bishop to f5, you have the rook pair, you have the bishop pair, uh, you have uh, definitely a fighting uh, chance here. But after rook to a1, Duda uh, decided to go for queen to b3, and now Magnus, again, should capture here, but he goes for rook a to b1. Again, allowing Duda to go for queen captures on b1, but okay, Duda already decided he doesn't want to do that. Uh, he played queen captures on c4, and only now Magnus captures on e3, but now with the queen as the rook is guarding the bishop on b4. So queen captures on e3, and now bishop to f5, finally Duda's... Uh, well, uh, the, the bishop that was pretty useless on b7 now comes very much alive uh, on this uh, diagonal. Uh, we have rook b to c1. Uh, you do not want to see d2 uh, uh, being made with a discovery, so rook to c1 first attacks the queen, and now uh, you could go for queen captures on b4, it's definitely an option, you could um, uh, give uh, up even one more exchange, and then queen captures on a5, and you would have the bishop pair against the rook pair, but you would have the passed d pawn and the passed a pawn uh, again. It is some some compensation. Objectively, white is, of course, better, but it's rapid. Uh, you know, who knows what might happen. Uh, in the game, queen to b3 was played by Duda, and now uh, we have rook captures um, on c7, queen captures on d1 with check, king to h2, and now queen back to b3, putting a pressure on the bishop here, and Magnus finds the strongest continuation, and that is queen to d4. Now the threat, of course, is bishop to c3, and you want to uh, put pressure on that uh, king. Uh, later on, you can put uh, the, the rook on a7, attack the pawn, put the rook on a8, pressure the bishop, and then black will definitely have problems. So Duda needs to figure out how to stop bishop to c3. He plays queen to a4. Now, of course, if you move the bishop, you can trade queens. Uh, and rook to a7 goes after the pawn and uh, okay duda does have the bishop pair but uh, it's not really doing all that much you cannot advance the pawn uh, so uh, you know it's it's not uh, as great uh, of course the bishop cannot capture but the queen can capture and guards the bishop so that's the point uh, bishop to g6 was played and now rook to a8 there's always time to capture on a6 so what you really want to do uh, is pin that bishop uh, we have queen to d7 uh, and now comes queen to b6. Uh, we have queen to f5, and now Magnus is, of course, completely winning, uh, so feel free to pause the video and win the game for Magnus uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that the king is almost getting checkmated. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, a rook captures on, F, uh, on f8. Uh, this is what Magnus played. You could also play queen captures on d6 to put pressure on the bishop. All of this uh, works nicely. Uh, Magnus played rook captures on f8. And while you can resign here, uh, Duda found that there is uh, a, at least a little bit of poison left in the position. And he decided to continue. Of course, you cannot capture. If you capture, it's checkmate. Uh, that uh, you know everyone can see but if king to h7 uh, now uh, you can easily mess it up magnus played queen to d4 and that was it but the point is if magnus played something like queen to d8 uh, which would threaten checkmate and okay you're up a rook you're threatening checkmate life is good this is actually a dead draw because now queen to f4 leads to a perpetual if you go down the board we have a perpetual here uh, queen check king to h2 queen to f4 with check and of course if you play g3 then you just get uh, checkmated uh, mating too uh, with 
with the bishop on e4. So yeah, Magnus of course spotted that after king to h7. He said, nope, Duda, you are not tricking me. Queen to d4, and he was in this position on move 40 that young Shisht of Duda resigned the game. And a very nice win for uh, Magnus Carlsen in round 11 of this year's Global Chess League. So now these two squares have been taken. You don't have checks. Uh, that's it. Magnus is just up a full rook, and that is that. Let me just quickly check uh, how the, the team played uh, here. Uh, yeah, it seems, sorry about that. Yeah, it uh, seems to be 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, but no, uh, as the, okay, Magnus won on board uh, with white pieces, but Mamediarov defeated Gukesh with black, and all the other games were drawn. Obviously, the Gulf Titans have defeated the Alpine Warriors, as Mamediarov's win with the black pieces against Gukesh is worth more than Magnus's uh, win with the white pieces over Duda. So again, um, uh, we have a win on, on first board, but a loss uh, for the team, which seems to be happening quite a lot in this tournament. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Duda played a very nice active game. Um, yeah, he, he sacrificed the exchange, but probably at that moment where uh, Magnus allowed him to go for the queen sacrifice where he played rooks, uh, rook to a1, he should have gone for queen captures on a1. And then probably it's a completely different game uh, with the position being something like this. Okay, you have the bishop pair and the rook pair. Uh, this is definitely still a game, but uh, you know, Duda declined uh, uh, the, the uh, possibility of sacrificing the queen twice, and that was uh, it's probably not even the reason that he lost the game, but it just led to a worse position to a worse position to a worse position, and then in the end, you know, he just lost. Uh, so uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any favorites, do use hashtag suggestion. I will go over your uh, suggestions as always and gladly show the games. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jim Meadow Tool, uh, Yun Young, uh, Federico Torres Velasco, Dan McCormick, and James Eugene Cashman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.